Hi, this is Mike from Black Cat Amplification, and I've got another cool amp demo for you. This is a Princeton amp built into a really neat 1940s radio, General Electric. Um, very, very neat looking radio. It was in amazing shape. I, I refinished it a bit uh, and cleaned all this stuff up. This shined up really, really nice. I kept the original dial. This is a Princeton AA964 model. Very similar to the Blackface Princeton um, AA1164, which is a reverb unit as well. So that has the tremolo and the reverb. This one does not have the reverb, but it's very similar. Slightly different circuitry, uh, very close to the, to the Blackface. Um, I think it sounds a lot like it. It's got the, those warm tones. You know, Princeton's are the best recording amps of all times. Uh, you know, from back in the day, they were for great amps. This one's really neat because it's a head unit. There's no speaker inside of this. Uh, and this is for sale. Nobody's claimed it just yet as of me making this video. So if you're interested, let me know. But uh, beautiful, beautiful tones out of this thing. I've got it plugged into a uh, Mesa Boogie 412 cabinet right now. And the controls are the, the master volume. This is also your one-off switch. You turn it off like that, so that way you can control everything from the front. So you have your treble, nice and bright, chimey. Okay. Bass knob. Really big, big sound, really big, clean sound. And then of course the tremolo controls. So this is foot switchable. I have built it with a foot switch. This is an Offender original foot switch. Click on that and we should start getting our, to our tremolo. Let's turn that off for a second. One thing I want to talk about is I did modify the tremolo circuit. It's exactly the way Fender did it, but I changed a value to deepen it slightly Right, so if you use the deep the intensity knob, you get a little bit deeper of a sound if you go up higher. And I've also lowered the speed of it slightly, so you can go even lower than the original Fender Princeton as far as it being slow. So it's all the way down now. I'm gonna turn the intensity way up so you can just hear this. See how slow that is? That's slower than the original Fender. But it goes just as fast as the original Fender. I would say the original Fender probably starts about here. Maybe, maybe right there. But you can go even slower. And then of course you get your speed up. And that's all the way up. And even all the way up, that's totally usable, you know. Turn the intensity back just a bit. So you can turn that off with the switch. Another really cool feature I added to this is a mid control. Of course, there wasn't enough room for me to add a mid control on the front of this thing, so I had to do it on the back. Uh, but I really wanted to add that to this circuit because I've built a lot of Princeton's. This is the first one of this particular model I've built, the 964. I've built a lot of the 1164s, which have the reverb as well. Uh, and I've added mid controls to them and it just increases the dynamics of this amp so much because there's a lot of cool stuff here. So you have the power IEC cord, right? With a one amp fuse. The fuse is built right into the adapter. You have your speaker selections. There's two output jacks for this. It's kind of like a head unit, right? There's no internal speaker. So, you know, 
plug that always if you just have one speaker plug that into the main and then if you have two you can have an external speaker and do like two 8 ohm cabinets or two 16 ohm cabinets uh, this also does have a transformer with four 8 and 16 ohm taps so you can switch that to whatever impedance your speakers are which is great to have because you know you may get a new cabinet it's a different ohms and now you gotta have a different you know figure out a way to change the ohms on that just make sure you're matching the ohms so here's the mid control here so i did have room for it and i decided to put it on there let's turn those mids all the way down like extra scooped right spender has very scooped mids but let's turn it up to about i would say when you have it on like the three or four setting, you know, one, two, three, or four, that's about where the Fender stock is for the mids. They are pretty scooped. But look how much higher you can take them. That's halfway, three quarters. different pickup you probably hear that difference a lot more uh right now i've just got the neck pickup on but yeah so mids knob and then there's a little switch here with a single input all these princetons had a low and a high input jack but instead of actually making a low and a high input jack i decided let's make it switchable that way if you want to switch to the low input you don't have to unplug the cable and since you're plugging your input cable in the back of the amp you know, it makes it like, you know, you got to kind of find the right spot and the right hole and you can't see it, but you could feel around for this switch and switch it between the low and the input jack without having to take the guitar cable out, which is kind of a nice little thing, when, especially when you're playing and you can't get to the back of this thing very easily. So we have a low input. And this is just like the Fender low input. It's just switchable now. it to high so those are the options on the back it has this nice back panel that I built for it uh, in case you need to access the tubes I'm gonna put some pictures at the end of this video so you'll be able to see what the inside of it looks like and what the circuitry looks like I did a hand custom hand turret board for this it's all you know, very hand done, all hand wired uh, to the Fender specs, except for the differences and enhancements that I showed you, the mid control, the slower and deeper tremolo, um, and the switchable input jack, right? So very neat little unit. If you're really into antique radios, this could be something, no, nobody's got one like it, right? I don't think there's ever been a Fender Princeton like this built in this model radio. So very cool. I've never seen another one of these like this with this dial. It's almost like the tel the old telephone style dial. It even has some of the call letters for the old radio stations. W-I-N-D, W-G-N, W-E-N-R. I'm not even sure where those stations were, but I think people could take these out and you know, put little station call letters in there for their favorite stations. So pretty slick. So what I'm gonna do is turn the volume all the way up. See, we start to get a little bit of that break up, right? I'm gonna cut the bass back a little. So there's not a ton of gain in these old Princetons. A little bit though, which is does make for a really nice push sound. Let's brighten that up a bit. Now with the mid control, that's where the gain sort of enhancement comes in, right? The originals don't have that, so we've got the 
Yeah. I mean, it's on half right now, actually. I'm going to turn them back to about where Fender stock is. <laughs> cranked all the way up very clean too i i can't even hear an idle hiss i mean if i listen really closely i i can't even hear that you don't even know the amps on it's it's all the way up it sounds great now it is attenuated a little bit but still it's a very quiet amp so let's turn those mids up halfway some of that mid growl right let's go three quarters of the way on the mids all the way up on the mids starts to crisp up if you turn the bass back and hit those highs a little bit more and I kind of like the mids at half to three quarters when I'm playing like this but you have a lot of options you know Go to the low input that's on the high input now. Low. See how, how it totally took it down uh, like three or four on the volume, you know, so to speak. Which is kind of nice because if you're really, uh, you know, I, I feel like they do have slightly different sounds, almost like two separate channels. It is really a technically a one channel amp with two differently attenuated inputs. 